A child care announcement ahead of this week's liberal cabinet retreat in Charlottetown. A reporter. 30s, the concerns they have about, you know, not only buying a house, but, you know, finding a job and, and dealing with sort of a changing economy and a, and a changing planet. But it's really going to be this kind of affordability, cost of living, quote unquote, crisis, uh, that, as people say, that is really going to dominate the discussion. Yeah. And I'm curious why the focus on younger voters, why is that a priority for the Liberals right now? Well, I mean, first and foremost, it's been a strength. It's about a whole bunch of thoughtful, good people coming together to try and figure out the best way forward. The thing is, Trudeau's challenges have gone far beyond just those who are cursing his name. Trudeau and the Liberal Party have been struggling in the polls, especially among young people. Abacus data says they're 10 points behind the conservatives among millennials, many of whom are having a tough time dealing with the rising cost of living and lack of affordable housing. And I need someone to tell me the pros and cons of living in America, because at this point, Canada just ain't it. I'm working like three jobs right now, and I have been grinding it out, and I'm not even really saving that. I'm not saving anything, really. I can't stay here, but I can't move anywhere else because anywhere else I move to the landlords are just going to charge me like $2,500 a month in rent. So with the Liberal cabinet gathered this week, today I'm talking again with CBC senior writer Aaron Wary about how they're refocusing amid sinking poll numbers and how they can convince voters that they're the right government to help struggling Canadians. So last week, we saw the Liberals do something that could kind of be read as them trying to project financial responsibility. And it came out in this leaked letter from the new Treasury Board president. How, how did she do? I, I thought Enemy Paul actually did quite well. She was very authentic. She managed to connect a lot of what she said to her personal life, which means that not only was she able to kind of advance Green Party policy and her vision, she was able at the same time to, to find herself, to talk about her parents, to talk about her grandparents, right? Talk about her lived and family experience. I thought that was a very clever strategy. And, and I thought generally she did a, a good job in the debate, answered the questions and was able to convey to Can Canadians, not just her values, but who she was as an individual. I noticed that. I mean, she, she did uh, tie a lot of her points to uh, personal anecdotes about family members, uh, you know, just, just to show Canadians who, who she was. How, how did she do? I, I thought Enemy Paul actually did quite well. She was very authentic. She managed to connect a lot of what she said to her personal life, which means that not only was she able to kind of advance Green Party policy and her vision, she was able at the same time to, to find herself, to talk about her parents, to talk about her grandparents, right? Talk about her lived and family experience. I thought that was a very clever strategy. And, and I thought generally she did a, a good job in the debate, answered the questions and was able to convey to Can Canadians, not just her values, but who she was as an individual. I noticed that. I mean, she, she did uh, tie a lot of her points to uh, personal anecdotes about family members, uh, you know, just, just to show Canadians who, who she was. How, how did she do? 